Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, where the presenter's link with one of the great names in Irish literature is established beyond doubt, even beyond the doubt expressed by Mr Coyle on a daily basis and about everything else. The city is Dublin, the place is the last post, a chip shop popular with starving musicians and Brendan Bean. I was in there one time and uh, ordering a hamburger uh, with no onions and a little cheese on it, and in bursts, it's the only way I can describe it, in bursts a man in a terrible state. A man whose shirt was torn, whose shirt was covered in blood, whose chest was open to the world, whose chest was, whose chest was scratched, and, and a man who had fallen a number of times. His face was swollen as if somebody had thumped him, his hair was standing up on end, and he stood there and he says, Give us a chicken and chips. So everybody kind of stood back, right? You don't know what's coming, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you tell me to stop then? No. I want to hear how it ends this time. Oh, this time? Yeah, yeah. Well, let me just tell you that the true story is this, mm-hmm. and the one I've always told. Mm-hmm. And a person went off, and a person brought back the chicken. And he stood there, and he didn't pay for it, and he just looked at it, and he took a bit out of it. And the person that had served him the chicken was walking away. And he got the chicken, and he threw the chicken and hit the man in the back of the head. He said, that chicken is not done. And he bounced the chicken off the back of the guy's head. And the guy just turned around. And do you know what he said? Would you prefer a fish? Uh, I don't believe it. I know you don't. And not for a second. That's why I'm telling telling you stuff. The presenter has a soft spot for poultry. Fowl. Both alive and with chips. But no amount of chicken talk can help when the studio telephones are possessed. Listen and be very afraid. Oh, listen, there's some hens available. Uh, there's a lady actually wants to talk to you about hens. OK, we'll talk about... Uh, there's, something, there's something that I'm going to tell you sometime. But what, I will... What is that? I'll make... <laughs> what what did you that? do? That's supposed to be the lady I'm talking to. Emma, will you reach no, over and use your finger? I have it done. Look, what did you do? I just put up the thing. It should be there. It should be there. <laughs> Emma! Emma! Will you fix that for... That's it. Hello, good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry about that evilness. Will you speak up, please? You're very, very low. OK, I'll do the best I can, but this oh, is one of the... this is terribly low. I may not be able to hear you. Anyway, it's about Pecker Dunn. Yes. Shall I read you the wee newspaper article in last Sunday's Irish Independent? Uh, uh, providing it's not too long. Right. The cream of Irish music will pay tribute this evening to the legendary Pecker Dunn, one of the greatest musicians produced by the travelling community. Yes. Now, in his late 70s, it is often said that the Pecker played at more monster finals than Cork. Yes. Health-wise, it's been a difficult few years, and on the benefit night at Dublin City Hall at 5pm this evening, will help with respite and other care that he now needs. I'm aware of all this. to organiser Manix Flynn who is running the event in conjunction with Trad Fest. I appeared with Manix Flynn Among on... Among those appearing tonight will be Tony Mahon, Steve Cooney, Stephen Ray, Les O'Neill, Jen, Jinx Lennon and Paddy Casey. Were you at it? I wasn't at it, but I took part in a radio programme. I do believe it was Arts Extra last Friday. Wait a minute, Jerry, I cannot hear you. I'm sorry, love. I, You're nothing... not speaking up, Jerry. I can't speak any louder, for God's yes, sake. Yes, you can. I can't speak any louder. Is that any louder? Is that well, better? That's better. Were you at the do? I wasn't at it. I, w- I was unable to attend. Oh, did but you know about it? I did. I talked to Mannix uh, along with Mary Louise Kerr on Evening Extra one night last week about that very thing. What's uh, Evening Extra? <laughs> Arts Extra, I mean. Is it on Radio Ulster? It is indeed. Every night it's... Uh, what time and is it on? Are you on it regularly? Pardon? Do you be on it regularly? No, no, just occasionally when something of interest crops up that all I right. know. Well, I thought you'd be interested in prayer, but obviously I'm not giving you news at all. No, it's okay. No, it's good that you talk about you that. You and Sean run in the morning. Pa- uh, pardon? <laughs> you see that show you and Sean run in the morning? Yes. Could it not be televised? Oh, God. I don't think so. <laughs> Can you imagine what that would be like? Uh, I don't think so, somehow, because then I you would see the evilness. I cannot hear you. I'm sorry. We cannot televise it because the evilness would make itself self-evident. Make it what? The evil would be self-evident if it was televised. But sure. I mean, if they can't take that bit of evil, God help them. <laughs> yeah? Bet- Our Betty- evil is refined beyond beyond any imagination. Yes, Betty- yes. Betty has a question that she's still waiting for the answer. You don't know how to pronounce question yet. Question. 
You can't say question. Can I not? No, you can say Every it again. Day I'll have to go, love. No, I, no, no, you're not going yet. All right. Uh, Betty. <laughs> what, <Watch out. laughs> uh, Ask him the question. Ask, no, I say question. You say question. I ask him the question. question. Have ask you got a question? Him, ask him the question. I say question. It's question. Never to find out about the hen, how she knows she's pregnant. What? You never find out how the hen knows she's pregnant. No. Now, I know a lady rang in and said that it's nature. We all know it's nature, but I want to know, is he a one-woman man when he goes into the hen house at night? A one-egg rooster. Right. I don't know. Maybe perhaps someone out there will enlighten well, us. Ring Geordie and ask Geordie. Oh, God, no. Know. What, you can't ring Geordie and ask? Why, no, oh. this isn't Tuesday. This isn't Tuesday. <laughs> well, Monday's the only day he's half sober. Uh, today would be a difficult day to ring him, I think. No, Tuesday's so uh, sherry day. He'll be all right Wednesday. You know, his weekend starts on a Thursday and goes right through until Wednesday night. The presenter's show business story is again revisited, this time to highlight the injustice, the disinformation that were endemic in the Irish show band industry. A public inquiry must be established immediately to clear these people's names. We used to have stories in the paper that said that we did. Uh, in actual yeah. fact, it's a chessman jetting off to America for coast to coast tour. Yes. What you needed was a photograph to accompany that. Now, it was obviously very difficult to get a photograph of us in Times Square or, you know, on the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge or something like that. So, what they did was they brought us out to Dublin Airport. And do you remember the big, well, you still do that, New York stairs you go up to the plane. At that time, people could go on to the runway, they didn't frisk you or anything. And we'd I say, don't believe you. You don't even know what I'm going to say. And you say you don't believe me. I don't believe you. But you don't know what I'm going to say. Go on, I think Uh, I do. All right. So what we used to do, do. the the manager used to say to the people, listen, we'd like to get a photograph taken of the band standing on the the steps. the boy in charge of the aeroplane. No, these these were different times. No, you didn't say anything to the guy in charge of the aeroplane. You go out and say, listen, uh, this is Dublin Airport, for God's sake. 1968, no such thing as a terrorist. You know, they were, people used to smoke and everything the captain would smoke and I mean, you used to be able to slap the flight attendant's arse and stuff like that. They didn't care about anything. they just get on the plane, away you go, open your bottle of vodka and hit you on say, the, say to the captain, where are you going? Whatever you have Give yourself. He'd go, and, go up and sit beside him and everything. Can I sit beside you? Yeah, come on, you're all right there. Do you want a fag? I don't. Do you want me to drop a vodka? No, I won't bother. You know, whatever you're having yourself. Yeah. And that's the way it used to be. So our manager used to bring us out and he'd say, um, OK, right, Stand, walk up this... And he gives a little kind of Aer Lingus bag with nothing in it. You know, little bags, Aer Lingus mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. And we'd stand there and he'd say, stand up there. And he'd bring a photographer out. And we would stand on the steps going up to the plane and turn around and wave <laughs> with our bag. And then he said, right, that's enough, right, away you go home. We had to go home again. I used to get the bus back. And it was all lies. All lies. The listeners are having difficulties following the narrative of the show. Few of them have the confidence or initiative to bring their difficulties to the presenter, but once in a while, someone does get through. You tell that many stories. Yes. They made different endings. Yes. So if we had slave notes, we could read it and get the proper ending. The the reason I tell different stories is because I think people like to hear stories, and the reason why I have different endings is because I like to freshen them up a bit. You know, and it's not as if they're not true. It's just as if, you know, there's three types of truth. What you believe what I believe, and what really happened. See, there are three types of truths that I just go between one and the other. <laughs> well, you see, well, do you agree that the content of this programme needs a little improvement? No, no, it does not. Do you think I should deal with specific issues of the day, such as the fat boy does? No, no, sure, he's wired up anyway. He is wired up anyway. Do you think well, I should encourage people to scream at me about flags and he albums and bins? Into people. You enjoy people, he gets into people. Oh, yeah, he's like, he's like a thug, isn't he? A thug. Now, do you think I should talk about the flags and emblems, political parties and ins and outs of the unions and the, the different parties? Do sure, think sure I should do all that? that? I mean, as if it matters. As if, you know, it little men and Stormont. It does not matter at all. And if, if, if people in England took away our money, we'd be no use to nobody. <laughs> There's people on, the, people on the other day talking about a United Ireland. Right. I'll tell Jerry. And, uh, you know, how we, we'd be a benefit to the people in the South. I've got news for you. People in the South have factories that make things and they sell them to people away on other places and they, it's like what's called an economy. They're not all sitting at home waiting for their checks, as indeed many of us do. I do that. 
The breadth, strength and indeed variety of the Northern Ireland voice has been a subject of interest for many years to the presenter. Each day he tests the changes in pronunciation and emphases amongst his own people. There's a place that I phone. It's uh, it's either a doctor sent a doctor surgery, a dentist surgery, or something else. I'm not going to tell you what it is. And I always phone every once in a while. I just phone for the crack because I know they're always busy at half nine in the morning. You sometimes don't see me doing this, but I ring them up, and the girl girl comes on and she says, "Your call is important to us. Your energy. <laughs> your call is important. Your, your call is important to us." You are in a key. A key. A key. <laughs> <laughs> Your call is important to us. You are in a key. <laughs> Question. Do you remember New York, New York? Yes. New York, New York was a, a bar, a nice bar in Derry, Stoke, London, Derry, and it was run by a very nice lady called Peggy. Do you remember Peggy? Peggy used to run the, the bar, and I used to work in the magazine. And every once in a while, when I was bored, I used to always ring the bar up to hear her answering the phone. Now, the bar was called New York, New York, uh, mm-hmm. after the song, New York, New York. And it's now called Peppy's, by the way. I was actually going to ask you where it was. I it's, called, it's now called Peppy's. Anyway, and she used to lift the phone and go, Nyak, nyak. Nyak, nyak. And I will, hello. Nyak, nyak. I used to do that all the time. Anyway, it just goes to show Nyak, nyak. <laughs> yes, hello, good morning. <laughs> Look, there's nobody there. What's the He's point? Two. What's the point of this? Hello, good morning. Emma, will you fix the two. thing? Uh, yes. But you Emma, don't... will you fix the thing? Do your magic. You... Do that Donegal finger thing. You... Where is that? I don't know where it is. I'm just sitting here. I'm the presenter. What do I know? Man. Hello? Emma, will you fix that thing? Look, keep keep him away from it. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Look at me. I'm here. I'm saying hello to the man who isn't there. Emma, for God's sake. Emma, can you put him on one? Go on. Wait, 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 we're going to put him on one. Hello. Hello. There, Thank you. One. Thank you, Emma. The decline of our troubles has left a gap in the knowledge of the people of Ulster. There was a time when we were fully compliant of the alphabet used by the police and the soldiers on our streets. How quickly we forget the deprivations. D for... Delta. Delta. Oh, very good. E. Uh, Ernie. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. E E for Eva. No, I'll give you a clue. It's like margarine. All right. uh, Energy? Water? Eagle? It's like margarine. Don't be that on me. What's like margarine? Margarine. Yes, butter, margarine. But it's E we're looking for. Oh, yeah. uh, echo. Echo. Oh, uh, echo. Echo, right. Oh, God. Right. F. Frogstrot. Brilliant. G. Google. Ah, Sean, I'm surprised at you. G. There was a time. Global. You play it every week. Golf. Golf. There was a time when you knew all this stuff. Golf, golf, G- golf. Hitch. Isn't that the great thing the piece has done? We've forgotten all this. H for Harry. H for Hassel. H <laughs> for what? H for hotel. All right, hotel. then. I. I. India. I who have nothing. Sean, you're brilliant. India. India. Jay. Jockstrap. <laughs> I don't know. What? Yeah. Jay for, jock, Julia. What? Julia. 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 K. Eh? K. K. Karma. No. Car. K for Kiar. Pardon? Kilo. Just over two pound and weight. Kilo. Brilliant. Yes. All right. L. L for Larry. <laughs> Hats off. <laughs> Lima. <laughs> L for Lima. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> M. M. Mother. <laughs> Mother. Mag- what? Maggie. That- Maggie. <laughs> Mother. Midget. <laughs> Midday. Um, m- m- Monster. Uh, I don't know. What is, we, we give up on that one. No, I give up to you. And. 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 Nor, nor, no, no, Nora. Norman. <laughs> I think I'm fed up with this Nettie. now. Nettie. <laughs> oh. Orange. O- Oscar. Oscar. Good lad, Jai. P. Pish. Pish. 
<laughs> I don't know. I ain't got enough. I've had enough. That's enough laughter. All right, that's enough. Stop it. Thank you for listening. Back tomorrow. Alpha Charlie.